I have with me Pat Gossley, uh, who is one of our Art Fest artists for this year. Actually, Pat, you have been with Art Fest before, I think, um, on a couple of occasions when we were doing live and in person. Remember those days um, when there, you know there was open air and and everybody wasn't flat on a screen. Um, Pat is of Washington. I um, couldn't hardly be more involved in the DC art scene. Uh, does wonderful work, which I am real lucky to have a reference to right behind Pat, if everyone looks behind her. Pat does these marvelous layered, uh, um, they look like they're billions of layers uh, of color shapes and forms that are translucent and feed and bleed uh, onto one another. And Pat's going, if I will, if I can get myself to stop talking, Pat's going to tell us about how she makes her work, um, what, she, what it is that uh, you use for inspiration, Pat. And normally it's, there's, it, I'll start by saying if you were just passing by quickly, um, you might not really see the kind of tension that anyone can see if they stop for just a nanosecond, which I think it is part of what drives you to make what you make, yes? Um, I, I that suppose kind of... so, yeah. Um, so a lot of my work is uh, the, this layering um, comes from uh, experience with different energy modalities like acupuncture and um, energy uh, work. And even saying that, um, it's a little, little confusing because it makes it sound like that I begin a piece with a set idea in mind and I don't. Um, this all kind of evolves and um, basically if you go back and what I was doing when I got out of graduate school, I was uh, very figurative work, working the same way, not having an idea, but figures would come out. I would see hands first and I sort of pull a figure out of the process and um, then I sort of went inside my body and um, I got into encaustic for a while and was getting uh, sculptural and, and then I had a baby and the, the whole melting of wax process didn't really work into a time frame so I stopped doing that but uh, uh, one of the things that I did in that process was I was taking some of the material that I was using in the acrylic work and dipped it in paint and and uh and kind of did a uh m pressing onto canvas and that got me thinking in this uh way of infinity of uh going into an astral plane if you will and um then uh after I had the baby, we had done some renovation on our house and um, replaced all the plumbing and all the pipes, which is a pretty involved process having a little baby. And then finding out that there were lead service lines coming into the house. So that was really, uh, a really anxiety producing moment in my life to think that I brought this kid into this polluted world. And, one of the ways that I dealt with anxiety and also in taking care of him was to um, work on these little tiny pieces of paper. And I could take, uh, I, would, I would paint on them to a certain extent and then I would have them where I could walk around the house with a drawing board and colored pencils and I could be in the room that he was in. I was with, with him, but I was also making work. And, um, the whole lead in the pipes process became, you know, the EPA set up a lab in my house. I was uh, in regular contact with the water experts at Virginia Tech. And um, it was really ironic is in April of 2018, one of the paintings- Yeah, I love that. I love that. <laughs> one of the paintings from that time ended up on the CDC's Emerging Infectious Disease Journal. So, um, that ha that 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 piece ha that uh, cover has me a, though a little suspicious. So, 
I'm thinking, you know, if Pat had a piece two years ago on the cover of the Emerging Infectious Diseases publication, maybe I should be watching what she's doing now to see what we're going to be in trouble with two years from now. I mean, <laughs> well, it's, it's strange. Um, this issue is about antimicrobial resistance. Yes. And um, I actually had an encaustic painting from the 90s of a phage, which is a micro, uh, it's a, a bacteria that can actually eat eat other bacteria. So it's uh, a way to, you could conceivably attack a, a bacterial infection with a phage that e eats it. And um, he, the, the man that edits this uh, wasn't really interested. I, I gave him, he asked for some samples and I gave him a whole bunch of different uh, images including that phage. And it just so happened that Greg Staley had just been over to my house to photograph some of my recent work. And um, I'm sometimes not very, as organized as I should be about uh, documenting my work. And I had some of these paintings that had never been photographed. And I threw them in this pile that Greg was photographing. And so since I had that, I said, oh, here's one. And, he ended up picking this, even though it was, wasn't recent. It was from like 2004. So that's, that's how it ended up on the magazine. I, I actually thought that he wanted something else of mine. But, um, so so what, 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 what are you working on now that I should be afraid of it two years from now? Or I should say, what did you submit to somebody that's going to be shown soon that I will be afraid of two years from well, now? Well, I'm not so good at predicting. Of it, but I'm, I'm trying to uh, have like an intentional healing. Uh, I, um, I, I feel really uncomfortable talking about it because I've been mocked in the past. And I feel a little bit more comfortable talking about it since people are dying and there seems to be more people that are openly admitting to the spiritual aspects of their art making and, and um, ideas of healing. Um, I still don't feel 100% comfortable talking about it. But so one of the things I'm doing is uh, I, I'm using a lot of stencils, which also includes oh. plastic junk that I find in the sidewalk when I'm walking the dog. And that, so everybody knows what these are, these kill ducks and seals and stuff so um sometimes i string them together and make uh more intricate patterns that i paint over i recognize and, those from your paintings yeah and i um you know it's it's weird it looks as i my painting process is a way for me to deal with stuff going on in the world and there's just so much disinformation and uh crazy stuff going on right now I don't really know if it affects it, it. I'm constantly finding things when I'm actually working on it, I can't see it. And some of the pieces that I have up now, I'm actually working the same way I did when I found out there was lead in the water. When, it, when the pandemic first started, I did the same thing I did before where I had these small pieces of paper, uh, nine by 12, and I had painted different layers on them. And then I would go, uh, when I found, especially when I found myself being really anxious, I would, I would just like calm myself by actually drawing into them. And, um, this, you know, sometimes I can't see what's happening when I'm working. And then I have, I actually literally have to like not work, look at it for a while. And then I'll come back and realize that there are figures in it that I didn't see before, or I didn't see while I was making it, or um, there will be a meaning that comes out of it. And some people say maybe I'm too fixated on having a meaning to it, but uh, um, I really like I really like having an association or meaning to the work that I do. So a lot of these um, layers of six pack rings actually make an X, which is a big question today about gender. And if you happen to have ever read this book, you don't have to read very far, but like page 30, it goes into 
explaining how important the X chromosome is in determining gender. It's not the Y chromosome, it's the X chromosome. And um, this is a Pulitzer Prize winning book and it has a lot more to say about that than I do. But so there's a lot of X's in my um, work right now that just somehow organically formed from using these things and uh, also from other stencils that I'm using. I, I do buy stencils. Um, I cut them myself sometimes. Haven't done much of that re recently. But I also uh, find a lot of materials, uh, in junk in the street uh, that might have a pattern on it. And sometimes I go to Goodwill and I'll buy up a bunch of uh, like lace like a lace tank top or something that has a nice pattern. I come home and rip it up and uh, spray paint through it. So then I mix, I use a water-based spray paint. I'm very sensitive to oils and solvents. And um, so I don't, I haven't been using, I do, I sometimes you go back and use a uh, water-based oil paint, but um, mostly not using, I, not using any lead-based paints, I'm guessing. No, <laughs> latex house paint and acrylic paint and um, latex spray paint. Well, all of those oh, meanings, really I mean, you, you're calling them accidental uh, when you're, or you're not calling them, but you're suggesting that maybe some of the meaning that's coming through is accidental, but it has to start from the subconscious and whether, sure. you know, yeah. and it just yeah. happens to manifest itself. Um, it's not quite as accidental as right. you're suggesting it is. What, how has the pandemic, do you think, affected you? I mean, you were saying that you're reacting to uh, the, your environment and news and the like. If, have you been isolated? Are you getting more news in a, in yeah. a consolidated form? And the reaction is well, what well, brought you to the smaller lead base, or I'll call it the lead era? Uh, kind of paintings? Yeah, my, uh, I'm particularly isolated because I have a really hard time being on social media. I mean, I, from the get go, I'm, you know, the first time I ever got on Facebook, I would, I would get off of it. There were just um, all the things that are supposed to uh, bring us together. <laughs> Felt, happening. felt like it ripped holes in me. Like I became this like big piece of Swiss cheese while I was sitting there. And um, uh, so, need, needless to say, isolation for the pandemic has been more isolation than yeah. for many. Yeah. And with good cause. And that's and that again has what's driven you to the slightly smaller walk around the house uh, executions that you're talking about. Um, well, actually, that was at the very beginning of the pandemic. Um, I was one of the first people that I knew of that made a big deal about getting a mask because not so much that Trump was saying ridiculous things about the virus, but that Rush Limbaugh came out and said, it's just a cold and the left is going, you know, and I've seen what... Uh, family members or people that I grew up with who listened to Rush Limbaugh's radio show and how they got really distorted information, especially about the, the whole birtherism thing with Obama. I just thought there's a virus. I don't want to be stuck in the house with no mask. I, I went out and got a mask. I, you know, that was in February. And, um, I don't know. I was just, uh, I, I calmed down a little bit about it. And then I started painting this big, huge painting, which maybe nobody wants big paintings right now. So I'm not, um, I have done a whole bunch of different, you know, if I spin my, I don't know if you want me to spin the computer around, you can see different stuff. Well, we, we, we have established um, a studio, a virtual studio. I have to keep thinking it's a virtual world now, uh, at least this year. Uh, we have established a virtual studio where you've uploaded a number of your pieces. Um, you know, and they, I, I would encourage people to go have a look at, at any point. Um, actually, your work does carry pretty accurately on screen. You know, some people's work doesn't carry so well, but 
I think yours, your lovely pieces become more lovely uh, when seen on screen. You can really see that translucency that I was talking about. It, um, it, rings, it really rings true. Um, but yeah, I have to wrap this up because my timer just went off saying that, that it's going to kick us off here. I'd just like to mention one thing. This is a t-shirt that I made for Important. Yes. Um, artwatchdc.com. And um, I hope you'll consider buying one. It supports League of Women Voters and Rock the Vote. And uh, your life depends on it. Go vote. OK. Pat, thank you so much. Um, we look forward to seeing you live and in person, real live human faces, not just this flat stuff that we're looking at now, soon. Uh, yeah. Thanks for your time and thanks for your participation in our 14th annual Art Fest.